Hello, Ms. McFarland here. I just wanted to make a quick video about some of the basics of using Desmos. And hopefully it will help you as you're doing things in your course for me and for others. The first thing I would like to do is, of course, go to desmos.com. And you should go there as well. And we can push Start Graphing once you're there. I want you to notice that I'm already logged in here, but let me sign out. If you'd like to create an account, you can sign in with your Google or create an account with another email address. Um, I think it's probably a good idea to maybe link it to your GCISD account. Okay. But um, I would sign in then. And so it has my name there. Um, let's start with a few things. Um, the thing that's really important over here is this this wrench. Um, so let's spend a few moments talking about that. There's grids on here, axis numbers, um, x-axis, y-axis, radians, degrees. So let me just talk about first maybe just some basic graphing things. So I'm going to go over here on the left hand side and I'm going to type in y equals x. And if I wanted um, y equals x squared, for instance, I have a couple of choices here. I could use the a squared button down here, or I could use the shift number six button, which will bring that exponent up. Okay, so let's say we were going to graph the parent graph of the quadratic here. Now let's go over here to our settings. Um, the grids and later in the course you'll be using the one on the right that's the polar grid looks like that for right now pretty much mostly what you're going to use are the is the Cartesian grid now the axis numbers and the the minor grid lines you could un-x those but I probably wouldn't um, same thing with the x-axis and y-axis if you want to um, but it kind of gives you a good bearing there uh, just as a side note, if you wanted to add a label, you know, if you were doing something like, you know, time and velocity or something on this graph, if you needed labels, you know, not re really relevant that much to us most of the time, but just an FYI. If you wanted to adjust your window, you could do it within here. I could make it, you know, negative 5 until... 10 or uh, yeah 10 and we could step by fives for instance I could also you know zone out here and zoom out using the you could use your mouse or the minus and the plus signs the other thing I think is kind of cool is there's this zoom square and if you want things to look you know just squared up there that will do it that zoom square okay so this is kind of a play around with this thing um the other thing i wanted to say is this projector mode which is kind of nice as well it makes it a little bit darker a little bit more pronounced let's see what else that I wanted to mention over here on the left hand side if you kind of hold and click here you can get a different color to your graph you can make it dashed or dotted if I wanted purple dotted graph I could get that Again, most of these things are just cosmetic but you might want to do those if you want to get rid of a graph of course you can X out of it um, if we want to reorder things, like let's say that we had y equals x and y equals 2. And let's say that I wanted, well, this is a good point too, the slider comes into play. I could make the slider automatically. That's an interesting thing. I could move these by clicking and dragging. Um, the other thing I guess I just wanted to familiarize your, you guys with is... You know, there's exponents here on your keyboard down here. There's functions. You've got the basic trig functions over here on the left. That's going to be helpful later. 
as well. Um, if you're going to be in statistics at all, these might be helpful, you know, mean, median, min, max. Miscellaneous sometimes could be helpful if we need an exponential function or a natural log or a log. Um, for my calculus kids, there's a derivative here, least common multiple, greatest common denominator. Okay, those things could be helpful, probably not as much. The trig functions for you guys will be most helpful. Um, I'm trying to think what else. If you have to, sometimes along the way, you might have have to put in theta. And so if you click on the ABCs here, you've got all the letters, and you've got this angle, theta. So kind of think about that later. The good news is most things on here, you could just type in and it'll do it. Like, if you want theta to be in there, I can type out T-H-E-T-A. Okay, T-H-E-T-A. If I could type it, okay, and it'll do it. Um, if you wanted square root, if you didn't want to go here to find square root on your keyboard, you could do SQRT and it'll do it. So many things will take care of themselves in typing. Hopefully this will help here with a few of the basics. The other last thing I wanted to talk about was saving this graph. Once you're logged in, if let's say that I wanted to save this for something, put in my corrections or you know, my notes or whatever the case may be. I could save this graph and then if I want to look under here, I see this untitled graph, well, that I didn't um, actually title it, but I'm going to save it. Okay, so we've got demo here. Okay, saved. And then you can call it back up. Open that graph and there it is. Um, hopefully this helped you get started with Desmos, um, and I hope you have a great day.